Welcome once again to Air Engine Research, where I'm trying to develop a compressed air engine that can be used in a vehicle that is compact and efficient. And currently, I am working on this engine. It's not completed yet, and I still have quite a few bugs to work out, but I am in the process. As soon as the weather warms up, I'll be going back out again. But in the meantime, I've decided to answer some of the questions that some of my subscribers have asked me about. Uh, the previous video that I did, I probably didn't do a very well job of explaining and formulas. Some of the people say they got lost while I was explaining. But in this video, I am going to show you a spreadsheet that I work on that can be used to calculate various things that I want to know about the performance of my engines. I'm going to go like that. As I said before, I've been asked many times how to figure out some of the numbers that I use when I work on a prototype. This on a computer would be called a spreadsheet. It's a computer program that's used to calculate various things. The nice thing about this, you put numbers in these different squares where there are spaces, and then you can go other places and calculate based on those other numbers, something else that you need to find out. Now, I'm, the last time I tried to use formulas to explain some of the things that I was working on did not go very well. It's too complicated to understand a lot of times what I'm coming up with and where those numbers are coming from. So what I'm going to do this time is just give you the numbers that I use to calculate those things but not show any formulas. So as you notice here, this would be the pressure that we're going to be running in our engine, 250. This is the engine RPMs. Um, you can All these numbers you can change, and when you change one number here, anywhere else in this spreadsheet that that number is used, it will automatically recalculate that information. Now, I'm using 2400 up here for an RPM or, or engine revolutions per minute. And at 2400 in my pickup that I had, it would be running at 60 miles an hour. So 60 miles an hour, if you take that and divide it by 60, would be one mile a minute, which is 60 miles an hour. The uh, engine to tire ratio means that the engine is going to turn over 2.85 times and the tire on the ground will only turn one time. Uh, I'm basing this on a 35 gallon uh, tank for the compressed air and the stroke of the piston is 0.75 inches and the crankshaft would be based on a four inch throw which means from the 
center of the crankshaft to the outside of the thing that rotates is four inches. Now the tank size is 17.3 or 0.13 inches in diameter and it's 55 inches long. So that would be fitting in the back of your pickup truck or in the trunk of a car. And I'm using one tank and the pressure in that tank is 4,500 PSI. Now the, the engine that I'm using is a four cylinder and the stroke is 0.75 inches and the piston diameter is 0.75 or three quarter inch. The stroke times the volume, which would be the piston size times the length of the stroke gives you 0.33 cubic inches of compressed air that it takes to push the piston down three quarters of an inch. Now I've got four cylinders, so four times this gives you the total volume per rotation of 1.32 cubic inches. Now we want to find out how much volume we have in order to run the engine and find out eventually how long that will run. So we take the tank volume times the 2.31, which is, there's 231 cubic inches in one gallon size times the 5,000 or, well, I did that wrong. I said 4,500, but I'm using 5,000 here. So 5,000 times 35 gallons times this gives you 40,425,000 cubic inches of compressed air at 250 PSI. So we've got 250 PSI. If you take this divided by 250, which is going to be the running pressure of the engine, you end up with 122,066 cubic inches of running air. We are using a, I think it's a 15 inch tire, but anyway, it's the diameter of the tire is two foot and the circumference is 6.28 inches, six foot 28. And here are 0.28 inches. And the one mile is 5,280 feet. So if we divide the 5,280 by this number, we get 841 times the tire turns for every mile. Now using the 2,400 RPM, again, in a calculation over here, this tells you that you can go 38 miles on this many cubic inches in a tank. And that would be able to go just a little over an hour drive time at 60 miles an hour. Now, one of the things that I was asked is uh, the torque. Well, the torque can be figured here at 36.8 foot-pounds of torque. And there again, that is using the throw of the crankshaft, which is four inches up here, times the square inches of piston 
that would give you anyway the 36.8 foot-pounds of torque. It's a pretty long formula, which I'm not going to put in there because it, it is maybe too confusing. But you have 36.8 cubic or foot-pounds of torque, and there's some formulas down here that I use to calculate horsepower. If you have 36.8 foot-pounds of torque and you put it in the formula, at that speed, it will give you 17 horsepower. Now this is the formula right up here, which is horsepower is equal to the torque in Newton meters times the speed divided by this number times that number, which is a formula again, but once you have the spreadsheet filled out, you can change the torque and find out all the time what your horsepower is going to be. Now there is a simpler method and it's not quite as accurate but close. You just take the torque times the speed and then you divide that by 5252 and in this case with this information it comes out to 16.8 horsepower instead of 17 but that's close enough for as one said just to get a, a good idea it's not too difficult to work with a spreadsheet but you do have to know quite a bit of math and in order to fill out these blocks with the proper formulas there's a lot of multiplication and division and square roots and things that you will be using in order to come up with a lot of the information. Uh, I hope I haven't been too confusing today and if you are interested in what I'm doing I would appreciate it if you subscribe and push on the little bell in order to be notified when any new videos come out. And please give me a thumbs up or thumbs down so I know how well I'm doing or how horrible I'm doing. So I guess for today, I'm going to say so long and I'll be putting more information out. Right now the weather is too cold to work in the garage. So I'm waiting for that to change and then I'll be going out into the garage and actually show some more work on my prototype as, as I work on it. So for today, so long.